Hi everyone, Sane Man here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Andrew, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sandman, I was overjoyed to come across your postings and have shared them with my male friends, even those who are married. I wonder though what can be done to promote MGTOW in mainstream politics. As you have rightly said, continued exposure and promoting of MGTOW will prevent this increasing male disassociation with women in marriage from being misappropriated by feminists. I also want to mention the whole insepidly termed manspreading. Is it at all possible that having a woman suddenly measure the distance of spread that a guy sits on the subway or car or bus is actually an invasion of privacy or even assault? Is it not possible to find out how the law governs such infringement of privacy? This would be a way for men to begin arming themselves with legal knowledge. Men just don't have to take this sexist nonsense. Incidentally, we now have a new sexist term used to be little men, also known as mansplaining. If a man were to use the term womensplaining, wow, they would be in so much trouble. This goes to show how relentless feminists are in demeaning men, even when their attentions aren't sincere, if perhaps a little awkward. Regards, Andrew. Well, Andrew, thanks for your donation as well as your topic request. So you want MGTOW to go politically mainstream. The problem with that is that feminists and women will take the term men going their own way and misappropriate it intentionally and say that we're a bunch of selfish misogynists and that we're no better than feminists themselves. I used to think that taking MGTOW mainstream would be a great idea to help grow our ranks and awaken men to the red pill reality. But now I see it as counterproductive. We need to grow our grassroots following much larger before we're ready for the spotlight. There are maybe, what, 40 to 50,000 men online active in the MGTOW community. If myself or someone like Turd Flinging Monkey had our channel shut down right now, I don't believe we would have enough grassroots support to get those channels back at this stage. In a couple of years, when I have over 100,000 subscribers, that will be a different situation. But right now, the worst thing we can do is go mainstream. If we want to put ourselves out there, we also need a good spokesperson that looks great on camera and doesn't embarrass us. But the problem with that is that most of us have to stay invisible or we become potentially unemployed and our job prospects completely disappear. I would gladly go public, but I would lose a great deal of my clients and might actually affect my family relationships as well as my friendships. Whoever takes MGTOW mainstream into politics needs to be financially isolated and protected enough not to have to worry about making a living. I'm hoping that three or four years down the road, when I have mostly paid off my house and have a child through surrogacy, then I can come out in public. But until then, I want to stay underground. And even if I were to show up in the public eye or someone else did, women would instantly go into damage control mode and explain to the general public what MGTOW is in their own words, and it would be in many ways damaging our identity, or dare I say, brand. So long as we don't do mainstream media or politics, women will not see us as a threat, because women don't understand that an idea as powerful as going your own way spreads like a social virus. Women generally see male behavior as either good or bad. But if a man doesn't take any course of action and stays passive-aggressive for some reason, we stay invisible to women. We keep the giant female land whale asleep scratching her butt while dancing all around her in her elf shoes. If you want to see a link to a video by the MGTOW called Heartburn, where he actually cuts up a Christian pastor speaking false truths about MGTOW, I'm putting it in the description below. I want everyone to subscribe to Heartburn and hear what he has to say. I only discovered his channel a couple of weeks ago, but it's one of my favorites and keeps me happy until Paul Proteus returns to making videos. But getting back to this idea that people will basically define MGTOW, I think it goes further than feminism. Not only do we have to worry about women going around explaining MGTOW to the masses, but we also have to worry about mangina preachers like Jeff Riddle and the traditionalist Christian right going against us explaining how men going their own way is a sin. The second link is an uncut Christian podcast cutting up MGTOW. The last thing we need are Baptist preachers attacking us at this point. I guess he never actually read the Bible because in it, Jesus as well as his disciples are truly going their own way. They either didn't get married or they left their wives. The truth is, the more we become mainstream, the more pastors, feminists, politicians, and other public figures will come out against us and speak badly about us. But MGTOW needs to sneak up on them in an invisible way, like a fart until they're choking on our numbers, and when they finally do end up speaking up against us, they will be inundated with emails, phone calls, as well as a huge backlash from men. Once we have the numbers to guck up their phone message box, crash their websites, that's when they'll know they're actually dealing with the real public phenomena instead of just a few thousand disgruntled men.
Another issue with taking MGTOW into mainstream politics is because of the number of women that are sexist and in the government right now. The third link in the description is to a video called Feminist Australian Senator Plays Victim Card and Gets Owned. And it features an Australian senator that tells another male politician that he's mansplaining and that he should stop doing it. He responds by saying exactly what you said, Andrew, by saying that what if he told her that she was woman-splaining? He is visibly and verbally upset, yet no one in the government legislature or committee reprimands her for her behavior, and one woman sitting next to her appears to be agreeing with everything that she's saying. The truth of the matter is that in 30 years, I predict that 70-80% to of all politicians will be female. And even if there's a failure in government, that majority of women will still blame men for being responsible for everything that goes wrong. Women gain the benefits when men take a risk and win, and men pay the price when they take a risk and lose. The problem is that's human nature and it's not going to change. So if men going their own way become a political force, we will be blamed as the birth rates continue to go below replacement levels because we choose to go our own way. And in case anyone is wondering where I found this Australian senator video, it's from another MGTOW content producer called Captain Nemo. And I also suggest subscribing to him as well because he posts a lot of great content from the mainstream regarding misandry as well as the control of men with regards to what's going on in our society. The reason I'm bringing all of this up is because I believe it's too difficult to take MGTOW mainstream because women will explain it and define it using their own deceptive language. It would be dead on arrival. They would school us because they over-victim us. Women win by being the bigger victim simply because they have a vagina. Talking to a woman and saying that they aren't victims and showing good examples of successful women in the world that can compete with men pisses off women because it doesn't actually show them as victims. It hurts a woman's self-esteem when you point out another woman that does things better than her because it shows all the failings in her own life and she'll end up hating you for it. Anyways, another reason that we shouldn't have a MGTOW political party is because it will give our opponents ammunition on the idea that all we are is the polar opposite of feminism. Currently, there are almost 50 feminist political parties around the world, with the most notable one in Sweden having 5.3% of the vote, and they actually have one politician, Soraya Post, that actually takes one of the seats in the European Parliament. If men going their own way walk away from supporting women, then we should also walk away from the corrupt political system that supports them as well. Some people will say that MGTOW needs a political party, but we can never win at the game of politics and we shouldn't even bother trying. As men, we are the innovators, inventors, as well as the idea creators. We are capable of far more original thought than women, and we can invent new ways of doing things. The electoral process is just there to distract us and keep us under control. I know that many of you won't agree with me, but at the end of the day, politicians are out there for themselves, regardless of if they're male or female. They don't care about the people that vote them in so long as those same people continue to vote them in. As far as I'm concerned, female politicians can fight to see who gets to line up the deck chairs on our sinking society. We will have far more power holding back our resources and not getting married instead. That will mean that the state will no longer be getting our support, and we will produce less in general, so there will be less tax revenue heading up the chain to find its way into those greater number of female politicians' hands. Again, we need to starve the beast and not support it. We don't need a democracy, we need a republic that's ruled by laws instead of despots in high heels. Democracy subjects the minority of people to the tyranny of the majority, so it's basically a fail. What we need is a standardized set of laws created by men that keep things stable and balanced for the long term. But since women gained the vote, everything in our society has been on the shorter and shorter timeline. Typically, men invest for not only themselves, but for their legacy and for future generations. Women generally don't invest for future generations and instead steal from future generations and themselves in the form of debt so they can buy consumer goods such as shoes and hats. They aren't suited to long-term thinking the same way that men generally are. Yet we're electing more and more women and giving them power to shape society in their own image. The last link in the description shows an interesting graph with regards to the national debt in the United States as a percentage of the gross domestic product from 1790 all the way up to 2013, as well as the projected debt to 2038. The really interesting thing about this graph is that up until the 1980s, male politicians got into debt during wars such as the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War I, the Depression, World War II, and then worked hard to pay off those debts after each and every single war. But something interesting happens in the 1980s around the same time women en masse enter the workforce and we see no-fault divorce introduced. The debt starts to rise and keeps going up and up. The correlation is that women vote in governments that give them free goodies. Perhaps when most women were married back in the 70s and 60s, they probably voted based on the way that their husbands wanted them to. Now women are voting for tax and spend governments more and more. Once women got the vote, that was pretty much it. The United States was never debt-free again. 
Women are the enemies of civilization because they're thinking about the here and now. Civilization is like a giant ship. It takes years or decades to steer it in the right direction, and if men can't do that because our material wealth is going into hardwood floors and granite countertops, then that doesn't leave us much of a financial future to look forward to. I say as men we should just unhitch our pony from this wagon and let it go over a cliff. If we as men going our own way try to hitch ourselves to the political system, we'll just go over that cliff along with women. I've got one final thing to say. MGTOW going politically mainstream won't work in the real world outside of online communities because women will control the political dialogue and define us well before we have a chance to speak. Like the ninja, our power is found in our stealth and deception. Sun Tzu said that when you're fighting an opponent, the supreme art of war is to subdue your enemy without fighting it. He also said that when you're fighting someone, appear weak while you're strong. We hide in the shadows afraid to show our faces and in the political arena as well. This makes women think that we're weak and pathetic, but we're just taking the position of the unloved underdog, and this helps our cause. And besides, everything we do as human beings is political. Just because it's not part of some rigged election scheme doesn't mean that it doesn't influence people. But it would be interesting to run for an election as part of a MGTOW party. That sure would get a lot of attention. Anyways, thanks again, Andrew, for your donation as well as your topic. And as for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the feminist politicians away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.